안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. I believe we are live. 네, 라이브 시작하겠습니다. 오늘도 같이 재미있게 공부해봐요. 안녕하세요. Hello. 반갑습니다. 오늘 수업 시작할게요. Let's begin today's class. So let me just quickly check if everything's all right. Um, I can hear. Uh, myself, I believe, I, you can hear me. I see the audio levels going up and down. I can see myself clearly. So we're all set. 안녕하세요. Please say hi to each other. Say hello. Say 안녕하세요. And welcome back to Talk To Me In Korean's live classes. And today we are going to talk about your uh, daily writing practice as a beginner learner. So of course, obviously, for intermediate learners and even advanced learners, uh, what we're going to talk about will help but if, especially for beginner learners who want to improve their Korean, who want to incorporate learning Korean or studying Korean, practicing Korean into their daily routine, this is going to be uh, very important and useful. 안녕하세요. So um, it's four in the morning for N3RGON, and I hope I'm reading your ID correctly. 3 a.m. for some people, and um, yeah. Thank you for tuning in, regardless of where you are, what time it is. Um, can you hear me all right? 안녕하세요. 음, 안녕하세요, 여러분. 여러분 is a very good and versatile word that you can use when you want to address a group of people, right? So, um, 여러분, if you don't know this word, it means everyone. Um, yeah, but only when you're addressing a group of people. You don't want to say 여러분 to your friends casually. But anyway, um, it's midnight in Los Angeles. And um, yeah, 3 a.m. here too, 9 a.m. in Belgium. It's currently 4 p.m. in Korean time in Korea, Seoul, Korea. So yeah, thank you for waking up early, staying up late to tune in. Um, as usual, we're going to talk about today's main topic for 40 something minutes and then we will try to answer some questions in between and you might have previous, uh, you might have seen the previous live feeds, recordings and it's always more helpful to uh, have those video chapters that people can use, you know, after a, a live feed is uploaded as a recording. So I want to answer as many questions on the go uh, as possible, but I'll, I also want to compile questions in one place. So maybe we'll do that like three times throughout today's class so that I can mark a certain portion of the live feed as Q&A. Okay, so I have some questions that I see here. Please, um, if you have a question and if you posted a question and I didn't see it or I didn't answer it, please post it one or two more times and uh, I will see. Don't post it like repeatedly, uh, but please remind me. All right, so 오늘 수업 시작하겠습니다. Today's topic is practice writing Korean every day. Like this was in the um, title of the YouTube feed. And as a beginner learner, I mean, these days you have a lot of AI tools that will help you form um, more professional sounding, more like natural sounding sentences, and that's great. I use uh, ChatGPT and other types of AI um, aids or tools to come up with better sample sentences for my own language learning practice. But at the same time, having those tools um, doesn't guarantee that you will actually study every day. So you still need some methods to uh, still incorporate language learning into your daily lives. And this is um, what this book is about. We're gonna be featuring many chapters from this book. If you have the book with you, please take it out so that you can actually look at the pages yourself. And if you don't have it, and if you're interested in it, I have a link in the description for this specific book, which is my first writing practice in Korean. Since this is uh, your first writing practice, this is going to be for beginner learners. And um, what, what the reason that we wanted to make this book um, is because we wanted to 
give you ideas as to what you can write in captions on your Instagram posts or um, in your tweets and Facebook posts, social media messages or DMs or even KakaoTalk messages, any kind of messages that you can actually send to people, post so that other people will see. And these types of short social media messages or um, text messages are going to be great practices for you because they don't have to be long and they don't even have to be complete sentences. So as you will see in the first chapter that we will we'll cover, which is day two of the book, you don't even have to completely conjugate the verb or anything like that. That can be your first step. Normally, without any like social media contexts, if you don't finish your sentence, you can't really like say it to somebody, you know, a human being. Maybe you can um, use those sentences in like AI chats, but normally you have, you are some, under some kind of pressure to finish, complete your sentences. But on social media posts, as your first practice, you don't have to. So, okay, um, let me, uh, try to find the best way to do this. I see some questions already, which is always welcome. And I will, so if you see me actually sharing a screenshot of your question, you see that it has been registered and I will get back to it and um, answer it. And I saw some feedback on uh, the audio level. I will actually adjust the audio level a little bit so that I am speaking pretty loudly now, but I hope you can hear me a little better. Can you? All right. Um, 또 질문을 볼까요? Aha. 그리고 여기 또 질문 있어요. 질문. 질문. Questions. Mm -hmm. 그리고 또 질문이 있는지 볼게요. Oh, you can hear me better now, a bit too loud. So yeah, <laughs> can't be perfect for everyone. I'm sorry. I will do my best to make the necessary adjustments. Okay, so these are going to be some questions that I answer later. Okay, so your questions have been registered. These three questions. Um, and maybe lastly, <laughs> for now, keep your questions coming. All right, so here, let me show you the inside of the book and get started. So what you can do with something like this, with a book like this, or it can be some other types of material that you use. It doesn't have to be only this book. It can, this, what I mentioned in this video can be applied to other types of materials. So for example here, you know, in day one, if you look at it, so please pay attention to the contents of the book. Um, day one is a noun plus 시작. You just use the word 시작, noun plus 시작. So for example, 휴가 시작, my vacation begins. So in a normal conversation type of setting, you don't say like 휴가 시작 and expect it to sound like natural because it's a verbal communication. You, you need to conjugate the verb and all that. But as your first writing practice on social media, even with these two nouns, like two syllable nouns, repeat, like not repeated, but used here and here twice, just two words, it's a complete caption, 휴가 시작. So you can have like 휴가 시작, 시험 시작, 방학 시작. 방학, 휴가, 휴가 is a vacation, like normal vacation, especially if you are on a family vacation or if you are somebody who works. And 방학 is a school vacation anyway. So anything that starts today and you have a picture to, you know, describe it with, or you know, show, you can say so and so 시작. And that's your first writing practice. And day two, we wanted to start with like the easiest ones. And day two, we're gonna talk about this in detail. Um, when you are doing something with someone, you can simply add 이랑 after the person's name or pronoun or title, so and so 랑. 
and then you have another noun, um, shopping, 공부, 운동. Shopping is shopping, 운동 is exercise, 공부 is studying. So you get the idea. There are many, many sentence patterns and formats that you can use to continue practicing like this. And here, another page in the table of contents. Let me just quickly browse through all the mini chapters. Um, you can you can go to day eight. 오랜만에 오랜만에 is for the first time in a while uh, after a long while. So um, when you want to do when you want to talk about something that you are doing for the first time in a while, it has been a long time since the last time. You can say 오랜만에 so and so. And in the book, uh, we also go into you know not just. Finishing the sentence here, this is great as a caption on social media, great practice. But if you want to actually complete the sentence with the verb and a verb like conjugation, you can also see that kind of information there too. And then um, some exclamations. So in one, one of the characteristics of the Korean language is that you see lots of um, differences between, so here, written Korean, versus spoken Korean. So this is one of the many characteristics of the Korean language that are going to be different from many other languages. So many languages, especially English, I think there's a very small difference between, there is a difference, but there's a relatively small difference between the written English and spoken English. And that's why audiobooks have become prom like prominent and prevalent like really early in English, like you can listen to a, a novel and that wouldn't like sound too unnatural. But in Korean, like it took a lot of people a long time to get used to the idea of like hearing what was supposed to be read. So um, if you know what I mean. And one of those elements is this exclamation in like journal entries. So here, you see day nine, do you see it well? Day nine, uh, so and so, so um, 너무, so and so, 다, it's an exclamation and it's going to be great in writing, especially in writing. You can say that verbally too, to your friend or to yourself, but it's going to be more commonly used in writing, in social media captions and stuff like that. All right, and then day 10, um, you, want to use, want to learn how to use so and so, ui. and again, this is more specific to writing, written Korean. So uh, we have a video on the difference between written Korean and again, written Korean and spoken Korean. Please look that up, just type spoken and written in the search box on our YouTube channel and you'll see the video where I explain the difference. Uh, but here, ui, the word that you see between noun one and noun two, n one and n two, um, that's not going to be as commonly used in spoken Korean, but in written Korean, it's going to be super, super common. So very important to learn that. And then uh, day 12, what you did in the past tense, very simple past tense, and then day 13, you can talk about uh, what you want to do, and we're going to practice with day 14 later what you don't want to do. So, what we're going to do now is show you, okay, so yeah, there are more chapters here. So 30 days, 30 mini chapters in this book that you can study with. So, right now, let's begin practicing with day two content, okay? And before we do that, let's um, quickly answer some questions and pick out some more questions for later. So here, really quickly, 현우 선생님, what does the suffix 하더라고요 mean? So 하더라고요, I'm going to uh, mostly verbally explain everything really quickly. So, uh, so and so, 해요 is um, something does, something is. 좋아요, uh, 비싸요. 재미있어요. It's good. It's expensive. It's fun, right? 
Toragoyo is your observation. So you saw something and you are relaying your observation to somebody. Oh, 좋더라고요. Oh, I saw that it is good. Uh, 재미있더라고요. Oh, I saw it and I experienced it and I think it's um, 재미있다. Fun. Interesting. So it's basically relaying your observation or experience, your first-hand experience. Uh, usually and I'm not good at writing Korean. What should I do if you mean writing Korean? Um, it's not only going to be like limited to Writing because if you can write something a sentence as long as your pronunciation is decent enough it means speaking so It's going to be an overall assignment over like homework that you have to tackle But you just have to write a lot uh, How do you get better at doing pull-ups? You have to do more pull-ups, right? <laughs> simple as that. So, um, of course, it's simple, but not uh, automatically easy. So you just have to do a lot of writing practice, writing practice every day. And that's why we recommend that you get a material like this book or other types of writing, like topic-based and sentence pattern-based material for writing and write every day. And most people who are active on social media actually use social media every day and a lot of people post pretty regularly. So if you can actually do that, you know, every single time in Korean or every other time in Korean, that's going to be enough practice for a lot of beginner learners. And Korean Zun Thierry wrote, when you have time, if you can answer when we want to say about something, What's the difference between so and so te han and so and so kwan he? So te uh, han. So so and so te han and so and so kwan han are going to be the same mostly. And so and so te he and so and so kwan he or te he so kwan he so are going to be the same. So you were asking about te han and kwan he. So tehan is about and kwanhan is about. It's followed by a noun. So 한국어 글쓰기. 한국어 글쓰기. We're talking about 한국어 글쓰기, right? Korean writing. 에 대한 책. It can be followed by a noun. 한국어 글쓰기에 관한 책. 한국어 글쓰기에 대해서 이야기해요. So it has to be followed by a verb. Verb like that. Okay, that's the difference. And Sandy, finally, how do you say I have a question in Korean? You can say I have a question is 질문 있어요. You can say 질문이 있어요 too. Or you can you even specify that you have one question 질문이 하나 있어요. You can say those things or if you want to say like around it, like um, 물어보고 싶은 게 있어요. So in a more casual uh, conversation setting, you don't want to use the word like question. You can say, I have something that I want to ask you. All right. I'm seeing um, more like specific questions than I had expected, but that's good. I will get back to try to get back to as many of them as possible. So for now, let's practice together everyone i want you to keep your questions coming but at the same time i want you to actually practice with me so please look at the book image over here so when you want to write so this is a good example we're going to be giving you i'm going to be giving you three examples of uh, sentence structure that you can practice writing in and the first one is from day two of the book, my first writing practice in Korean. You can see the link to it in the description right now. Um, day two, chapter number two. 엄마랑 쇼핑, shopping with my mom. So um, obviously, if you have a picture, if you recently went shopping with your mom, you can just use it as is. Or you can go to the next page and use these types of phrases like you want to include what you did in the caption 
and who you did it with, you can say things like 조카랑 game, game, a video game with my nephew or niece, 남자친구랑 데이트, or you can say like 친구랑 so and so, 친구랑 공부, you see that. So you can say, um, so right now what I want you to do is in the chat box, in the comment box, write sentences, your own sample sentences related to your daily life, uh, if possible, using this structure. And the first person who did that is Ri Jin, 친구랑 먹방. 좋아요, 친구랑 먹방. <laughs> 친구랑 먹방 um, Like that So did you like literally actually do a 먹방? You know 먹방 is 먹으면서 하는 방송 방송 is a broadcast, right? So did you actually stream a 먹방 a live feed? Or did you Some people like use it metaphorically to, to mean to eat a lot or to eat in a festive mood or something like that to eat well did you actually do mukbang ah 동생이랑 먹기 oh okay 동생이랑 먹기 so this is good but you can like the most more common usually more common way to describe something like that is 동생이랑 점심 저녁 or 아침 식사 something like that like you want to talk about a meal or something whatever you um, eight, and then 아빠랑 운동. Um, and Alexandra asks, would you not use 친구가? In this case, 친구가 would be you know your friend is the subject and did something. It will be you know you can use it. You can start 친구가 and um, finish your sentence like that. But it doesn't mean with. Uh, 친오빠랑 음악 이론. 공부해요. Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, 음악 이론, music theories. Uh, 이론. For those of you who are not um, familiar with the word 이론, 이론 is a theory. Theory. 음악 이론. Hmm. Or like, in this case, is it a theory even? Like music, I guess, knowledge. I don't know how to translate 음악 이론, but 이론 itself means theory. 친오빠. 오빠 is your older brother, but you know, oppa can be a broad concept. You know, you know somebody and that person is older than you and you can address that person as oppa. There are many people in my life who call me oppa, but I only have two real sisters. Um, in that case, you can address your real, you know, your blood, um, your real brother, biological brother as chin oppa. So that's a good word to know. You already gave us two words that we can learn. 엄마랑 공부. That's good. Studying with your mom. 남편이랑 산책. That's great too. Uh, taking a walk uh, with your husband. 학생이랑. You want to say 학생이랑. You want to ask it's 학생이랑. It's 학생이랑 so and so. 남, 남친이랑 공부. 하고 있어요. You can say that. 남친. 남친 is 남자친구. Right? Like for short. 친구랑 등산. 등산 is hiking in the mountains with a friend. 엄마랑 요리. 엄마랑 요리. Cooking with mom. 학생이랑 영어 공부. Oh, yeah. Regin, you said 학생이랑 영어를 공부. That's okay. It works too. But uh, because you are ending it as a noun, on a noun kind of tone, you just want to drop the 를 there. 선배랑 연습, 언니랑 쇼핑, 선배 is somebody who belongs to the same kind of organization or institute that entered before you, right? Older than you, 언니랑 쇼핑. 나나니 wrote 아빠랑 항해, sailing um, with dad, 여동생이랑 이야기. These are great. Awesome. You guys did a great job. Um, 엄마랑 쇼핑했어요. You can also um, said you can also say it in the past tense like that. All right. Uh huh. 
And then let's move on to the next page. Thank you for participating and I am looking forward to more of your participation. So here you can see a little more information, some more examples. Let's move on to the next one, which is you know, forming complete sentences. So let's quickly read what we have in the book and then move on to the next chapter that we can practice with. You guys are doing a great job. 엄마랑 쇼핑, you can say 엄마랑 쇼핑 and end it there or just, you know, complete it like that. 엄마랑 쇼핑을 했다. 엄마랑 쇼핑을 했다. Um, here, again, I can't emphasize it enough. There is a difference between written Korean and spoken Korean, but it's not something that you have to worry about at all because you have to learn both eventually. And you will get a feel of how they are different very naturally as you actually interact with people. So, 엄마랑 쇼핑을 했다. This is a great um, entry on social media or a journal. If you want to say that to somebody, you can say 엄마랑 쇼핑. You might want to omit 을 and just say 엄마랑 쇼핑했어. In 반말, in casual language to a friend who is not older than you, 엄마랑 쇼핑했어. That's something that you would say verbally. 엄마랑 쇼핑을 했다 is something that you would write in your journal. And it's mostly a matter of changing, tweaking the ending, and the endings are not very diverse, so it's only like a, a couple to choose from. So. Everything else is pretty much the same, so it'll you know it won't take too long for you to be able to like naturally easily switch back and forth between these two forms. Um, here I see a question. So okay, let me before we answer that question. So let me just quickly read the rest of the sentences. 동생이랑 영화를 봤다. I saw a movie with my younger sibling. 조카랑 놀이공원에 갔다. A very good uncle or aunt, you know, because you're just lessening the burden on the parents' shoulders. <laughs> um, taking them to a theme park. 놀이공원. 놀이. 놀다 means to play. 놀이공원 is a set expression for an amusement park or a theme park. 조카 is a nephew or niece. So, like that, you can um, expand the sentence a little further. If you know more grammar points that you can use, um, you can just add location information. Um, Cafe에서, you know, where you studied, where you watched a movie, 영화관에서, etc. And back to this question: Do you always use dictionary form 다 um, when writing in Korean? Not really. You can write in the so and so, 아요, 했어요, 했습니다 forms too. It depends on the purpose of the writing. If it's, it's so and so, 다, it's mainly social media posts where you are not like specifically talking to anyone uh, in specific, or when you are just writing to yourself as a self talk kind of thing. Mm, some people, People have different types of styles on social media. So some people always write as if they're talking to, directly talking to like certain people. 오늘, uh, so let, let me just pick, um, 오늘은 바빠, 바빴어요. So a simple sentence, a great question by the way. 오늘은 바빴어요. So this is a fact, I was busy today. 오늘은 바빴어요. There can be many other details, but let's just keep it simple. And you can say 오늘 바빴어요 verbally to someone, and you can write it like that. 오늘은 바빴어요. 오늘. Let's just even omit the uh, particle. 오늘 바빴어요. 오늘 바빴다. 오, 바빴어. 오늘 바빴다. Let me just quickly type all the like most of the possible variations. 오늘 바빴음. 오늘 음, 바빠, 오늘 바빴습니다. So, I can imagine um, 
people writing using these various styles on their social media in an Instagram caption. Um, 오늘 바빴어요. Personally, what would I write? Which one would I use? 오늘 바빴음. I would actually use this one. I'm not like talking to anybody or talking with anybody in mind, so I do, I wouldn't know how to use whether whether to use this formal ending or this casual ending or a more formal ending. Um, I don't want my social media posts like I personally don't want to make it sound like a journal entry. Many people actually like that, but I don't, so I will use that. And if it's a more detailed sentence, maybe I'm telling a story. If it's a really short caption like that, I will use this form. And if it's a detailed story, I'm telling a story to my audience, then I will use the first and the second one mixed. So to answer your question, again, it's not always that you use the so-and-so ta form in writing. There can be many various types of endings, but here, as your first practice uh, and in social media posts, if it's an exclamation, if it's self-talk type of content, you can use uh, this so-and-so ta form quite frequently. And yes, it's not the dictionary form, it is the same as the dictionary form, but it is actually the um, narrative form, okay? So we do have a lesson on the narrative form on our website in the curriculum, so you might want to check that out. Okay, thank you for the great question. I love great questions and all questions in general. Let's move on to the book again and then so here, some vocabulary information. And the next chapter that I want to feature here, like I said earlier, is day 14, mm, unit 14. This is going to be a fun practice. So I want you to talk about, in the, in the chat, what you want not to do, so what you don't want to do. So 싫다 is to the first, um, dictionary definition that you usually learn is to hate. 싫다, 싫어요. But it also often, you know, equally often it means to not want to do something. So 싫어요. Uh, and when you want to do, when you want to say, I don't want to do it, you use the verb stem and then 기 싫어요. So 가기 싫어요. Uh, 먹기 싫어요, 하기 싫어요, 출근하기 싫어요. I want, I want to, I don't want to go to work. 싫어요. Um, nobody will ever say 퇴근하기 싫어요. <laughs> I guess maybe, you know, going back home. Uh, or 공부하기 싫어요. You can say so and so 기 싫어요 like that. Or even when you get suggest, when you get a suggestion or a request from somebody, 싫어요 will be a very straight up answer when you, um, one second. 네. 아, 네. I got a message that I was not typing in the right place. <laughs> so yeah, so and so 기 싫어요. Now you see, I made this mistake once before and I told myself that I would never do it again. And here we are. Anyway, uh, 기 싫어요, like that, verb stem plus 기 싫어요. And here in the book, 아, 일어나기 싫다, it's also um, narrative, self-talk. You can use it as an exclamation, you can verbally say it, or write in a caption. So, yeah, you are already giving me sample sentences. Great, let me just type here. Oh, 싫어요 is just basically no in many cases. No, I don't want to do that. Hmm. Ah, 일하기 싫다. 
J and 학교 가기 싫어요. Yeah, you can also say 학교 가기 싫다. Uh, 샤워하기 싫다. 야근하기 싫다. Yeah, 야근. 야근 is 야간 근무. 야근 is working um, extra hours. 운동하기 싫다. So here, 운동. Um, 아야, you wrote 운동. 기. It has to be 운동하기 싫다 because the verb stem includes 운동하. 실수하기 싫어요. Right? 실수하기 싫어요. I don't want to make a mistake. 혼자 하기 싫어요. Oh, 혼자 하기 싫다. So you have to do something. You don't, don't want to do it by yourself. 사람들이랑 대화하기 싫어요. Yeah, sometimes you feel like that. You don't want to talk to people. 사람들이랑 대화하기 싫어요. 사람들이랑 대화하기 싫어요. This one, 사람들이랑, um, I just said it and realized that it's also a good um, practice expression for the real, real pronunciation. 사람들이랑, 사람들이랑, with people, with people, 사람들이랑. If you can say it as quickly as I say now, that's good. So practice, 사람들이�ang, 사람들이랑, 사람들이랑. I prefer saying that. Um, oh, this one. 일하기 싫어요. Um, 일하다 conjugates to 일해요, but you have to conjugate it back to the dictionary form and take the verb stem and then 일하기 싫어요, and etc. Many, many, many um, examples that are great. And Giant Blitz says, I wish I could understand Korean. I'm utterly new to it, unfortunately. It's okay. Everybody is a beginner at first. I was a beginner. <laughs> I mean, of course, it, it was my native tongue. But you can improve little by little. So the most important key is continuation. Keep learning and the results will come for sure. So, so and so, 기 싫다. You can practice like that. And what we want to achieve with our book is to give you like prompts, cues to use. You know, with the advent of the AI technology, ChatGPT is all the rage. Everybody is using it and trying to make the most out of it. And without any prompts, the AI tools won't do anything for you. And also with practice, it's the same. You have to use some sorts of cues and prompts. And we want to give you those through the book. And day 19, let's practice with this, okay? The pattern or the, the structure is 웃을 때 예쁜 소희 So, 소앤소 할때 소앤소 한 so and so. So, verb, 을 때, adjective, 은, noun. Mm. Okay, so, 을 때, 은, 은, so and so. Here, let me actually, uh, I didn't prepare a screenshot for this, but I, let me just give you some example. Um, so somebody it looks really cool when they work out. For example, 운동할 때 멋있는 경화, something like that. 운동할 때 멋있는 경화. 일할 때, um, 일할 때 조용한 내 친구. So, from like earlier, we used two elements earlier, like 친구랑 쇼핑, 엄마랑 쇼핑. And in the previous one, how many elements did we use? Hmm, just one. Verb, 기 싫다. But here, three elements. So you, ex you increase the, the number of elements that you can use. So can you... Yeah, I, I see that you are um, take, taking a little longer to make sentences because this is a little more complicated, but this is going to be great practice for you. Give it a try. So verb, so so-and-so, noun, who is so-and-so, 
when they do so and so. Can you... Hmm. Okay, the first sentence that I see is 힐 신을 때키큰 여자 Okay, the structure works. 신을 때, 신다. 힐, 힐 is high heels. 힐 신을 때키큰 여자 mm -hmm. good, good structure. 안경을 쓸때 똑똑해 보이는 반 친구 oh, 안경을 쓸때 똑똑해 보이는 반 친구 Again, I'm not typing in the screen, right? So, 안경을 쓸때 똑똑해 보이는 친구 That's good. 운동할 때땀 흘리는 언니 Yeah, you can tell me in the chat. Thank you, Mara, for letting me know. 놀때 시끄러운 아이들 오, oh, here, okay. So, 엘리는 웃을 때 예쁘다. Ellie is pretty when she smiles. You can say 웃을 때 예쁜 엘리. 음. <웃음> 비를 봤을 때 행복한 경은 선생님. So, B, it's an artist name, right? B. You can say, of course, B Nim, but artist names are usually not followed by Nim in a sentence like this, P. Just, you know, Rain, the singer, an actor. So, B를 봤을 때 행복한 경은 선생님. So, let's um, um, analyze the sentences together. 힐 신을 때키큰 여자. I talked about it. 힐 신다 is to wear high heels. 안경을 쓰다 is to wear glasses. 안경을 쓸 때. 똑똑해 보이는 to look smart 반 친구 my classmate class friend 운동할 때 when exercising 땀 흘리다 땀 is sweat 땀 흘리다 is to um, shed so who sheds sweat 언니 my 언니 who sheds sweat when they when she exercises 놀때 when playing 시끄러운 Noisy, loud, idle, children. Children who are noisy when they play. So you can change it like that. 웃을 때 예쁜 엘리. Um, 행복한 경은 선생님. 경은 선생님 who is happy when she sees rain. 그리고 uh, 파스타 먹을 때 행복한 엄마. My mom who is happy when she eats pasta. Great job, everyone. So it took a little while before you started submitting sentences, but then all the sentences are great. And let me just quickly touch upon why the sudden, why the structural change happens in this case. Uh, thanks to, whose sentence was it? Alexandra's sentence. So, 엘리는 웃을 때 예쁘다 is a great sentence, very natural, and this is a complete sentence with um, Subject, um, I guess modifier, like when, and verb, right? So you want to use this when you want to talk to somebody verbally. And you can even say, 엘리는 웃을 때 예뻐요, right? Like a plain conjugation in the present tense. And when you want to write a caption in, on social media or somewhere else in writing. Again, like I said about here, about this, the meaning that I want to express is this. And there's smaller, there's a smaller gap between written English and spoken English in the English language. But since there's a bigger difference in, t in terms of the meaning and the feeling between written and spoken, in Korean, you don't like this. This will be more neutral. Like you're not even you're not saying anything in casual language. You're not even saying like anything in the honorifics. So you can keep it neutral by just ending the sentence with a noun. So I often do that, not even like intentionally, but just naturally. Whenever I post a picture of my children somewhere and I want to write about them, 
I often just describe the situation and end the sentence with my child's name or so and so, like somebody. Like, 뭐뭐한 누구. So if it's me, myself, that a friend of mine is talking about, like, 항상 바쁜 현우. 현우 who is always busy. So, yeah, that's why. You want to keep it neutral in writing without having to think about, not necessarily worry about, but think about the ending. Okay, so thank you for participating in this. And let's um, go back to your questions. I did answer all the questions that I actually made screenshots of, right? And let me go back to the chat box and let's do Q and A, keep your questions coming. But as a summary for today's practice, um, I do recommend this book. We actually put a lot of time and research into developing and publishing this book. And if you can, um, pr practice writing, like write every day and even about like the smallest things. And Instagram will be, or, or Twitter or any types of social media. It doesn't have to be a public, account you can just make a you know closed one and just write for your own practice just so that you can look back and see how much you have progressed or it can be a cacao talk message to someone whatsapp and other types of messengers that you can use to write sentences and describe um, what you did what you are going to do and who you are meeting, what you're eating, stuff like that. And this book will offer a lot of great cues and prompts. Um, let me just quickly scroll through the comments. Hmm. Okay, I have one question that I see that I want to answer. Let me quickly... Hmm. I might not be able to give you all the best answers right off the top of my head, but I will try. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here. Again, if you didn't get an answer from me, uh, what are the verbs? Uh, yep. Yeah, please type again. Okay, from the top. I practiced a lot but still can't understand the pronunciations. What should I do? Um, so it depends on what types of materials you studied with primarily. But if you... Um, it's a hard question because everybody's situation is different. But I recommend that... Um, don't feel too much stress, don't worry. And if you have some entertainment materials that you enjoy watching, keep watching. And just know that unlike the learning materials that are um, made for learners, the TV shows and movies that you will be watching are gonna be very, very different in terms of like how fast everything is pronounced. So you wanna start like with simple, easy, easy level materials and then keep saying things out loud and record yourself and compare. Recording your own voice is going to be very, very useful because a lot of the time you often find yourself, when you record, you find yourself like sounding very different from what you thought you would be sounding like, right? So then fix that and then you get better and better. So. Don't stress out too much about how fast you're progressing. And um, Abby asks, if it's not too far off of topic, could you explain the difference between ki and nin when changing a verb into its noun form? So here, um, ha ki, uh, undong ha ki, like I think what you are, undong han and kot, I think what you're talking about is this. 운동하기, 운동하는 것, um, it's almost impossible to list all the usages of each, but 
generally Undong Han and Kot is more like the f the the act the fact or act of exercising. So you can say uh, or the option of exercising. And Undong Hagi is more like the task of exercising. And Undong Han and Kot is more centered around the present tense, like Undong Han and Kot. 좋다고 생각해요. I think Undong Han and Kot is like the act, the fact of exercising is good. Undong Ha Ki is usually more centered around the future action, uh, like sort of as an item on a to do list. So, on a to do list, you often end your Korean sentence, sentences with ki, undong ha ki. Call dad, call mom, amante chana ha ki, apante chana ha ki. Clean the house, chongso ha ki. So, ki is often used for that, but that's not all. There are like dozens of usages, sometimes overlapping, sometimes different from each other. Uh, for both of these. So I recommend that you just um, experience the various usages of both naturally through context. And um, the next message, S-A-L-N, Salen, Salen, I think. I gave up a few months ago. Is it a sign for me to go on with Korean? Yes, it is. You can pick up where you left off or you start from the beginning. 처음부터 공부 다시 해도 돼요. You can start from the beginning again. You can do it. And Abigail, will this live stream still be available for non-members after the stream? Yes, it'll be saved. And our two previous live streams this month are also there on our channel for later viewing. And why is Korean hard? because it's a new language. Um, any new language that you learn, any foreign language is hard, right? Um, is there any schedule with our live streams? Yes, we will post again, but on our community tab, if you go there and scroll just a little bit, you will see the schedule posted there. Um, here, Alexandra, So when you learn and improve, you can understand more and more written text. You know more words, you can um, read more. But then sometimes when you hear spoken Korean, especially spoken Korean by just every, everyday normal people other than just voice actors or teachers, it's going to be more difficult. And that's because your flexibility range of um, your expectations or understanding of what a word or what a group of words will sound like is still narrow. So you think, you know, you know, on a spectrum of the technicolor, you know, range, you think this is red or this is green, but then actually right next to it is also green. This right next to it is also green. It's more flexible than you think, right? So kind of like that. You thought this word would be pronounced exactly like that with a narrow standard and then um, actually with people's habits and preferences, they will like pronounce it a little differently from what you expected. So my suggestion is um, work on your pronunciation. Um, when you have a reading material or readable material, or if you have a listening material and a script, we have our Bibim Chat um, course on our website that you can actually get a listening material and a script, transcript side by side. You can first read something at first slowly and then gradually faster, 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 and then compare your pronunciation with that of the native speakers. Ah. Yeah. All right. All good? All good? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it happens. So again, back to the, back to the expression. I, th I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I hope. Okay. 
So you see someone in trouble, like um, somebody is in maybe water or like in a situation where you where it requires you to take off your shoes and jump right in and to save that person. 발벗고 나서다 it means um, your friend is in trouble, your friend needs help, and you ditch whatever you are doing, and then you help that person out. So. Uh, 음, 제 친구가 아 제가 so here's an here's a sample sentence 제가 어제 갑자기 핸드폰을 잃어버려 어 쎄, 지갑을 잃어버려서 버려서 어 곤란했는데 친구가 발 벗고 나서서 도와줬어요. Not the most compelling sample sentence, but Yesterday I lost my wallet and I was in uh, in trouble. 곤란했는데 친구가 도와줬어요. 발 벗고 나서서 도와줬어요. 음. There's high pitched noise. Yeah, I think we need to actually keep it short. Is is everything okay? Is the audio okay? We're almost done actually, um, so we'll we'll wrap up. We'll wrap up now, and next week. Okay, I hope. Yeah. Before the audio starts acting up again, uh, we'll wrap up now. And please practice writing in Korean, speaking in Korean. If you have somebody that you can speak to, 한국어로 말할 수 있는 사람, 대화할 수 있는 사람 있으면 좋아요. That's great. But if you can't, uh, find a speaking partner right away. Just write and then do your pronunciation practice. Combine those two together, you're good to go. You can um, speak much, much better. And thank you so much. I, I see your comments about um, thanking the team for the content. And we thank you for following us and studying with our materials and using our website and our books. Thank you so much. Next week, I'll be back with another very good topic. And you will like it. I believe. So, thank you. Have a good day. Have a good night. And I will see you next week. 다음 시간에 만나요. Bye bye.